All right, good evening, guys. Tonight, uh, like I said in class today, we are going to be talking about women and minorities at home and also overseas, but mostly at home during World War II. So it, for the most part, we're going to be looking at women and African Americans and um, the effects of World War II at home, but we're also going to look at how uh, they impacted the military as well. So... Our learning targets for today, I can explain how women contributed to the war effort at home, and I can describe how minorities were impacted positively and negatively during World War II. So like I said, with women, the, the our big focus today is going to be looking at how they contributed to the war at home in factories, and for African Americans, um, we're going to be looking at how they were affected positively and negatively. All right, so... Women are doing work. So remember, our unemployment rate is the lowest that it has ever been. Okay, so unemployment is the lowest ever. But remember that the men are pretty much all overseas fighting. So where is all this labor coming from? How are we the lowest we've ever been? Where are the workers coming from? Well, they are all women. And how many? Six million. Okay, six million women are working in factories during World War II. And that is a huge number. It may not seem quite big. We have about 314 million people in the U.S. right now. But when you compare that 6 million to what it was, that number is absolutely astronomical. So women are coming in forces and they are just doing work. And why? Because it is their civic duty. Okay, it's what they have to do. They have to be strong to support the war effort. No better example of women going to support the war effort than Rosie the Riveter. Right there. All right, what is she doing? She's showing that women are strong, that women can do it, and do what? They can support the war effort. So women come in droves to support the war effort. And at first, workers are, not workers, factory owners are critical. Okay, so owners question women. But once they prove their worth, they love hiring women. Why? Why? Because women only get about 60% of the wages that men who work in factories do. Okay, so even though they're doing the exact same work, women are only getting 60% of those wages. Now, not only are women um, doing their best to support the war effort by working in factories, some women are even going so as to go to war. And how are they going to war? Well, they're going to war with a plan known as the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. So the W-A-A-C. The Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. I'm not going to expect you guys to remember that. The, the basic premise that I want you guys to remember is for the first time ever, women are actually being involved in the military and in more so than just nurses all right and typical women jobs they're actually getting some combat experience now most congressmen don't like this some of the quotes i'm going to read some of the quotes from you guys that are in the book which are pretty darn sexist um, but this is actual congressmen saying this if you take women into the armed services then who will do the cooking the washing, and the mending. All right, so that's a legit quote from an actual congressman. But nonetheless, the WAAC bill does pass, and the um, response is actually overwhelming. The first week and a half or so, over 13,000 women apply. And in all, 250,000 women end up serving some um, way during World War II in military service. Now, next thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at African Americans in the military. At most African Americans... All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is African Americans in the military. Most African Americans are against... Whoa. 
Most African Americans are against serving. Okay? They um, are serving because of the draft. They're not serving voluntarily. And the reason for that is that we still face racism and prejudice at home. Why are we going to go fight for freedoms overseas that we don't even have here? And very similar, oops, forgot the e. very similar to what they see at home, they face segregation in the army. And in fact, many northern African Americans face more segregation in the army. Like de facto segregation, like sitting at a lunch counter and separate bathrooms. So things that northern African Americans, some have never even seen, they're now seeing in the military. So it is pretty darn racist even in the military. And obviously the units are segregated. Now one very, very bright spot during World War II for African Americans serving in the military was the Tuskegee Airmen. And the Tuskegee Airmen was a group of African Americans who served in the Air Force that were just very, very extremely highly regarded and were a primary cause for Americans women, or winning um, World War II. And as a result, the Tuskegee Airmen really gained um, a lot of uh, recognition and were a source of pride for African Americans in World War II. Now, moving on. All right, so in the workplace, how do African Americans... Um, fair. Well, they don't fare, fare much better. In fact, many factories do not allow African Americans at all, except for jobs such as janitorial jobs, um, y you know, other kind of lower level jobs. But as far as like the actual factory work goes, they are not allowed. And so the response is um, pretty incredible, and it's led by a gentleman by the name of A. Philip Randolph. And A. Philip Randolph organizes something known as the March on Washington. And the March on Washington was set to take place... Oh, let me finish writing that, sorry. So the March on Washington was set to take place in July of 1941. Okay, so even before we uh, officially go to war. And basically the March on Washington, what was going to happen is A. Philip Randolph was going to send 500,000 African Americans to Washington, D.C. And what they were going to do is they were going to protest. Okay, and you guys can see an actual picture from the March on Washington down there. Talking about jobs for a decent pay, talking about, um, you know, Jim Crow laws and all stuff like that, because even factories that did have African Americans and allow them to work there, the salary um, cuts were incredible compared to what white men were making. So as a result, the president, dumbfounded by how many people he was going to get, A. Philip Randolph was going to get, FDR calls an executive order and basically demands fair treatment and equal treatment for all African Americans in the workplace. So they could work wherever and they would receive the same amount of pay as every other white man around. The problem is, is that one of the things that we see is that wherever African Americans go, racism follows. So, one of the groups that is set up to try to stop racism during the World War II era is a group known as CORE. And CORE stands for the Congress of Racial Equality. And basically all they're trying to do is they're just trying to end racism um, in, in the South, but also where African Americans are going during this time. African Americans are going to the, uh, to the North. African Americans are especially going West. And... Despite the progress that is made, the problem is, is that when African Americans are new to an area, it takes a time of adjustment. So these new areas exhibit race riots um, that, that exist pretty much wherever they go, okay? So these new areas, and not so much the North, but the West in particular, experience a lot of race riots that take place. 
And it's not only African Americans. Mexican Americans um, are also facing um, racism. And the best example of that is a group known as the Zoot Suits. And the Zoot Suits were a group of Mexican Americans um, who were basically trying to um, revolt a little bit. And we're trying to kind of show that they were proud of their Mexican heritage. And the Zoot Suit riots take place in California. And it's basically riots that ensue between uh, Mexican Americans and white Americans. And the result is there are a lot of deaths that take place. And again, the, the tensions of, of racism and prejudice rise during World War II, despite the works and the trials of CORE.